Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Peace Garage. Now today we're going to learn about spraying water-based epoxy coatings. Now water-based coatings are a little more finicky than your regular paints, than your solvent-based paints. They're a little more sensitive to temperature and they're a little more sensitive to humidity. So you have to know the relative humidity in the air before you start painting. But even though they're more finicky, they're a lot easier to clean up because all you need is some warm soapy water and it saves you the aggravation of having to use thinners and lacquer thinners try and use solvents to clean up your spray equipment. This particular epoxy can be applied many ways. Brush, roller, spray down with siphon feed, pressure feed, or an HVLP gun. Since it is an epoxy, it has good abrasion resistance, it's resistant to chemicals, and it can be put on a wide variety of materials from concrete to steels. The other thing that's nice about the water-based epoxy is the VOC or the volatile organic compounds are less than 50 grams per liter for activated compounds. It'll be tack free in roughly three hours. It can be handled after 12, but 24 hours really is the cure time for it to be handled and it'll be completely cured in 10 to 14 days. Since it's a water-based paint, as long as you don't get it frozen, it has a good shelf life for up to three years. Now both parts come together and when you mix it, it makes about a gallon of paint for only 85 bucks. Righteous bucks. Now these are the things I'm going to be painting. I have four of them to paint and these are giant hydraulic buffers. And it's just like a giant shock absorber. And what it does is it isolates vibration. These particular units are going on a, uh, on a piece of equipment that senses seismic activity and the device is actually planted two miles underground and you have to isolate the pad that's sensing the vibration so that when it does sense something it's true you're not sensing vibration from like a train or something like that so these are really cool I have four of the paint and the thing that makes it difficult to paint is this a couple things first they're made out of stainless steel 316 stainless and they weigh about uh, I don't know I'll say 15 20 pounds a piece and the, the stainless steel is difficult because uh, I need to have a direct to metal paint for this. There's a paint spec that's called out so I have to get the paint right on here and that epoxy fits the bill for that number one. It's got to be safe yellow which really narrows down your options for color. So the color really drove a lot of that choice. The second thing is they're filled with the seismic, the, the um, damping fluid inside. It's not hydraulic oil, it's a silicone oil. And silicone oil is extremely slippery and it has a, the, the viscosity is known so it makes a very good material for use in these dampers and we're not going to go into that because this is about painting but that silicone oil as this was being built the silicone oil is all over the place so I am at to clean these thoroughly several times before putting on the paint now the material I'm going to use to paint this with is a Rust-Oleum product Sierra Performance and it's an industrial coating this is a water based epoxy versus a solvent based epoxy like I've used before the uh, good thing about the water based epoxy very easy to clean up warm soapy water washes off all your equipment it comes off pretty easy now just because it's water based doesn't mean safer like vaping is safer than smoking it's still not good for your lungs so uh, you have to protect your lungs protect your skin and protect the area around you now this is mixed uh, two to one you have an activator and a base uh, two to one for gloss if you want a semi-gloss, you can reduce that one-to-one. -one. When you mix it one-to-one, -one, it's a semi-gloss. Two-to-one, it's a gloss. The drawing specifies gloss, so I had to find an epoxy that was direct to metal, would come up, uh, would be a gloss finish, and safety yellow. So this is what I'm using. So let's mix them up, and let's see how it goes on. So I'm using a two-to-one ratio on my cup. First, I'm going to mix three parts of the, the uh, activator. So I'll pour that in first, up to my three. And, of course, I just got that. I can't really see, but there we go. Okay, three, three parts activator. And I'm going to go up to here, three, with the one part of the base. Okay, so that's two to one. Now I always say follow manufacturer's recommendations or any instructions on the can and it says to thoroughly mix this for three to five minutes. Okay, now the consistency is fairly thick, 
But if you need to thin it, you can use water to thin it, which is great. But I'm gonna spray it just as is. I'm gonna use my little gun with a bigger tip, and we'll see how this goes on. It should go on pretty good. Of course, you have to strain it. Make you always strain your paint before you put it in the gun. So I'll strain that, put it in the gun, and we'll see how it sprays. Now the plan will be one tack coat, like a medium tack coat, let that cure for an hour, and then one gloss coat. That's all we need. Since the material is so thick, I found that I turned the gun all the way down to almost a pinpoint, just off pinpoint, and I used the full needle stroke, and I had about 10 to 12 PSI right at the tip, went on great. Now since this is a water-based epoxy, I'm going to let this set up for about an hour, let it evaporate a little bit so it's nice and tacky so it doesn't run. This material has a pot life of two hours. Pot life is the amount of time it takes material to double in viscosity or get twice as thick. So I have two hours before I can put the, have to use it all up. I'll let those sit for an hour. In the meantime, I'm gonna go clean the gun with some warm soapy water to make sure it's nice and clean and fresh for the final coat. Alright, now here's the finished product and they came out very, very nice. Now a couple tips if you're working with a water-based epoxy or any water-based paint. This particular paint, you have to make sure you spray above 60 degrees Fahrenheit and you cannot have the humidity above 83% relative humidity. Because if you do, there will be too much moisture in the air and the moisture cannot come out of the material. It'll stay in the material, it'll harden, and it'll blush, it'll turn uh, semi-gloss, or it'll be dull looking. So you gotta make sure the humidity is down. As you can see, they look great. I'm really happy with the way they came out. So they have water-based epoxies. Real awesome material to work with. And yes, I still have a little bit on my arm from when I was cleaning up. Now if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button so you can stay up with all the cool projects I do here. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.